open your Bibles with me in the book of Mark chapter 10 verse 27. Today I'm preaching about nothing is impossible with God. Nothing is impossible with God. Oh, can't you just say those words with me? Say, nothing is impossible with God. Praise. Say it like you mean it. Say, nothing is impossible with God. Point your finger at me and look angry at me and say, nothing is impossible with God. Now turn you to your neighbor and say, neighbor, nothing is impossible with God. You're much fr more friendly looking at your neighbor than when you looked at me, but I asked for it. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. So Mark chapter 10 verse 27 says, Jesus looked at them and said, With men it is impossible, but not with God, for with God all things are possible. I want to read that again. It's so powerful. It says, But Jesus looked at them and said, with men it is impossible, but not with God, for with God all things are possible. You know, when we read that, I never noticed it before, but the Bible doesn't say that Jesus said to them. The Bible says Jesus looked at them and said. So the writer, Mark, made a special point to say that Jesus looked at them and said something. And so I want you to know, imagine Jesus looking at you. Imagine the day when Jesus said these words to those seated there. You know, Jesus must have had a very piercing gaze. I mean, this is God in the flesh. And through the windows of the soul, the Son of God was shining through His own eyes and looking at people and when you, we looked at them imagine the, the the confidence the power imagine the the convincing way that it said this to them I'm sure when they heard it they were like yes Lord there's nothing impossible before if Jesus just said it it could have also had the same effect but when he said it with looking at them with a conviction in his eyes looking at them saying with men it is impossible but not with God for with God all things are possible it stuck into their soul hallelujah so when the Bible says all things are possible I believe it speaks of quantity and quality you know we can have many small things but a lot of them and we can have few things but they are heavy and you know if you take a thousand problems they can amount to one big problem in your life and you take one big problem it can amount to a thousand little problems in your life but I'm glad that God is not only the God of this thing or that thing he's the God who can who's the God of all things and all things are possible look at the small little things that you're dealing with I want you to know with God those things are possible he'll bring you through and think of the big thing or big things that you may be dealing with I want you to know again God can bring you through and God will bring you through hallelujah you know there's never been a thing God has not brought me through hallelujah David said I'm young I've been young and now I'm old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread. Praise God. So I am young and I'm now a little older than young, but I have not seen the righteous forsaken. When we started our church, I was uh, 44 and uh, I'm 53 now. That shows you nine years this year. Amen. Can you believe it? In May it will be nine it will be nine years right <laughs> but anyhow when we started it we were starting a youth ministry and I told them that it that uh, the youth is all the way up to 44 years of age but the next year we changed it to 45 so so now it's 53 and so I'm anyhow some of you just just did not make it sister Betty you just just fell out 54 you just missed it but anyhow 
Now look at what the Bible tells us in Luke chapter 1 verse 37. It says, For with God nothing shall be impossible. You see in Mark 10 verse 27 we read, With God all things are possible. Now in Luke 1 37 we see, With God nothing shall be impossible. So all things are possible and nothing is impossible. It's like opposites, but the perfect opposite giving the same message. All things are possible versus nothing is impossible. Let me tell you the God we serve says it in more than one way. He says, with me, all things are possible. And he says, with me, nothing shall be impossible. Hallelujah. Now, I want you to, to understand when the Bible says this, firstly, there's a difference between for God and with God. All things are possible. For God and with God, nothing shall be impossible. So what is the difference? But they're both applicable. Firstly, for God. We just heard, had that song. Nothing is impossible. You formed the world out of nothing implying that the God who made everything, do you think it's hard for Him to do something in your life? I mean, science is still trying to figure out the, the universe. But God's the one who made it. You know, somebody told me the other day, you know, uh, science is important because the church, they used to believe they, the earth was flat and they persecuted Galileo Galilei because he believed the world was round. Then I told the person, did you know that the Bible says the earth is round and hangs in space? There's two places. Uh, they, I can get them for you if you don't have it. The one says he hangeth in the book of Job. He hangeth the w world in nothing. He hangs it in nothing. Now, in a world that thought the earth was flat and was on a, um, the, the, the tradition was it was on a, on a, on a, um, on a tortoise. Nobody knew what the tortoise was walking on, but the whole world was on a tortoise. Tortoise, tortoise, how do you say it? You know, uh, so turtle, you know, the, the, they thought it was on a turtle, but the word said, the word said God hangs the earth in nothing. Praise the Lord. And then another scripture says, He sits above the circle of the earth. He sits above the circle of the earth. The last time I looked at a circle, it was round. Some of you might think it's square, but my Bible says it's round. Some of you might think it's flat, but my Bible says it's round. So my friends, let me tell you, the church missed it, but Galileo Galilei had it right. Galileo Galilei had it by science. The church had it by tradition, not based on the Bible. But let me tell you, if they just read their Bibles, they'd see that science and the Word is always in harmony. Praise God. Hallelujah. But let me tell you, He formed this world out of nothing, and the same God is on your side. Praise God. Praise God, we can't even figure out a little molecule sometimes. I mean, I can, I'm sure Einstein could. You know, but we, how do you, how do you explain that? But God made it. God made it. And if He made that, my friends, praise God, He, Him, He, He made you and He's on your case in a good way. He's taking care of you. No matter what you're going through, no matter what your trial is, no matter what your difficulty is, the God who made everything, the intricate scientific details of it, He knows for sure how to take care of your little problema. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. The brother who lives here next to us, this house here, uh, he's a, he's a, he's a um, Romel Avalos. He's the son-in-law of the Falkies that have this place. And... Uh, He's, a, he's got a HVAC business. He works with HVAC. And uh, since he's my neighbor, I let him know there's something wrong in our house. And so he was so gracious. He came out. And I remember it was, it was, it was a little simple problem. He opened this one thing and there was the wire loose. And he says, there is your problema. His parents are from Mexico. 
There is your problema. And let me tell you, God knows, God knows what your problema is. Somebody say, Gloria a Dios. Somebody say, praise God. Somebody say, hallelujah. God knows your problema. And God knows how to fix a problema. That sounds Italian to me. Amen. So, so for God, for God, all things are possible. Nile, for God. Woo! Woo! Where's Nile? Aha! Hi, Nile. All right, he's fixed on me right now. So, so for God, all things are possible. But did your Bible also say with God all things are possible? Let me tell you the difference between for and with. For means God, He can do anything, obviously. But with God is, with God is, the other day we had this piano in our house. We've had it for years and nobody plays it. And you can't move it from one place to another. How many of you know piano is heavy? And uh, we almost felt we just want to give it away, but praise God, I put it on Facebook Marketplace and I got, got $200 for it. It was, it was great. But you know what? As we, I told the guy over the phone, I said, now it's heavy. And he said, don't worry, I've got several boys. And they were like Timothy and Trey, big dudes. Uh, which one was the, which one of you told me that that was the reddest, reddest neckest group that you that you ever saw one of you said that anyhow so these boys came and and uh, and you know what when they picked up that piano i could lift it with my pinky because with them nothing was impossible for me i could lift the piano with them with my pinky I want you to know God is greater than a team, is greater than a hundred people, is greater than the Incredible Hulk. How many of you know the Incredible Hulk? The superhero. When I was a kid, he was my superhero. That's why I look like I look. <laughs> you know, so the Incredible Hulk, but God is greater than the Incredible. He is, is it a plane? Is it a bird? Is it? He leaps over buildings, you know, Superman. I've got super God on my side. I've got the most high God on my side. He's greater than Superman. He's greater than the Incredible Hulk. He's faster than flesh. Hallelujah. And he's higher than spider. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And with God, nothing is impossible. You know, you might look at a situation you're dealing with today and you're thinking, how will I make it? Well, firstly, for God, all things are possible. And you're like, yeah, I know, but he's up in heaven and I'm down here. And I know for him, nothing is impossible. Now I want you to change it to not only for God, but with God, all things are possible. And with God, he comes and he stands by your side. And he deals with your situation. And he takes your situation. And when you start functioning, don't leave it all up to God. Go, You go do it with God's help. Amen. Remember Moses. They stood there by the Red Sea. And the Pharaoh's army was this side. And the Red Sea was this side. They faced death if they went this way. They faced death when they went back. And they even told Moses... Is it because there wasn't enough graves in Egypt? So sarcastic. Is it not because we didn't have enough graves in Egypt that you brought us into the wilderness to die? Well, the Bible says, Moses cried to God. Sounds like some of my prayers. Sounds like some of your prayers. <laughs> you know, crying to God. And I mean, sometimes God gets annoyed with that. I mean, he can deal with it for a while. You know, and he strengthens you through it. But at some point he says, now take your authority. Take your power. And God looks at Moses. Go read it in your Bible. And he says to him, why, this is King James Bible, why criest thou to me? My Uncle John preached a message one, once. He, it was about when God says, stop praying. You know, and start taking action with your faith is the point he was making. But 
Moses, why criest thou to me? And Moses is like, oh, because he, God says, what's in your hand? He says, a, a rod, my staff. And he says, stretch it out over the sea. And he took that staff, which I see as our faith in God. And he stretched it over the sea and the waters parted. And they went through the waters on dry land. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. On dry land. When the Bible says dry land, it was dry land. You know, there was a teacher in a secular school or something, or whatever he was, and he was saying, you know, all the miracles in the Bible can be explained. And he went through all kinds of things, and he talks about, you know, for example, the Red Sea. He says, do you know that at a certain time of the year, the Red Sea is only six inches deep? So it's easy for three million people to walk through it. And one of the young freshmen stu stood up and said, Sir, but that would be a greater miracle because that shows that God drowned the entire Egyptian army in six inches of water. Hallelujah! Amen. No matter how you fling it, God always comes ahead. <laughs> Hallelujah. You like that one? I love that laugh. Thank you, Jesus. You know, my friends, praise God. Praise God. With God, all things are possible. And you're going to make it. But God almost says, why criest thou out to me? I already told you, with me. I'm not going to do everything for you. You know, there's a time and a place for that. Another sermon. You understand that already. You've been here under the faith preaching. But you know what? My friends, there's a time when God says, now you go do it and I'll uphold you. You go do it. God, I wanted you to do it for me. You know, God's like, you're not a baby anymore. I did it for you when you were a baby Christian. Now you go do it with your faith. Put that brain I gave you to work. Put your talents to work. And I will uphold you. And before you know, you and God will be like this. Working in tandem with each other. You know what the Bible says in Mark 16? It says, the Lord worked. They went about and preached everywhere and the Lord worked with them, confirming the words with signs following. So if the Lord was working with them, that means that they were working. When they stood still, God stood still. When they prayed, God move, God said, no, you move first. Amen. And when they moved by faith, <laughs> God moved with them, confirming the word with signs following. Oh, somebody shout amen here. Thank you, Jesus. Look at Jeremiah 32, verse 27. Jeremiah 32, verse 27. It says, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? The God's Word translation says, I am the Lord of all humanity. Nothing is too hard for me. But I want you to focus on that first word in Jeremiah 32, verse 27. Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? The word behold is uh, the Hebrew word hini. When I looked this out, I thought, oh, that's where Benny Hinn got his name from. Benny Hinn. Did you know Benny Hinn's first name is really Benedictus? That's his real Benedictus Hinn. But he goes by Benny. Benny Hinn. So Benny, uh, so yeah, the, the, the Greek word, Hebrew word for behold is Hinny. It says this means to pay attention to a fact. See and be certain. You know what that means to me? Well, firstly, of course, God's saying, look at me. This, with, all, with, with me, all things are possible. You know, just making a statement, but there's something deeper to this. He says, behold, I am the Lord. He's saying, when you look at me, look at me and see my qualities and my power. I'm the Lord of all flesh, of all humanity. Is there anything too hard for me? God's saying, look at me and see me as I really am. Because when you look at me as I really am, 
it will affect the way you function in your life. Behold, I am the Lord. God saying, look at me. God saying, look at my power. The Hebrew word hini, to focus on a fact, to see and be cer- and become certain of it. Amen. To see, to look at it and become certain of it. That's why, my friends, when Peter looked at Jesus, when Jesus walked on the water, Peter was walking on the water there with Jesus. Amen. But he, he was beholding the Lord, the God of the sea. And he knew there's nothing too hard for him. And when, so long as he looked at that image of God in his mind, walking towards Jesus, he was fine. But when he took his eyes off of the omnipotent God, when he took his eyes off of Jesus and he looked at the things of this world, he beheld <coughs> and saw the problems of the flesh. And he said, all these things are too hard for me. Amen. The Bible doesn't say be old and become convinced of the problems of the, this world and nothing is and everything is too hard for thee no the bible says behold i am the lord look at me i'm the lord look how big i am look at my greatness and my power look at me look at my greatness and my power behold i am the lord the god of all flesh look at this quality of mine that there's nothing too hard for me hallelujah you see my friends Whatever you focus on grows in size. If you keep looking at a problem long enough, it's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. If you focus on, if you dwell on it, your problem is going to get bigger. Actually, it's still the same size, but in your head, it looks bigger. In your perception, it looks bigger. That's why I'm saying look at God. Because... God's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Actually, He's no more bigger than He always is. But in your mind and in your perception of Him, you, become, you see Him bigger. And those who see a big God can do big exploits. The Bible says the people that know their God shall do exploits. If you know your God, if you look at your God, You'll see that there's nothing in, and you will do exploits in his name. But if you have a small perception of your God, you will have small exploits. Not even worthy to be called exploits. Come on somebody. But if you know there's a big God, you can do all things through your God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. God's omnipotence is always the same, but our perception of His power increases and decreases relative to our focus. Your revelation of His power translates into our experience of His power. I'm going to say that again. Your revelation of His power translates in our experience of his power praise the lord praise the lord so i'm going to leave you with this today with god nothing is impossible you know compliments go far away i still remember it from this day i had a bible college friend his name was uh, brother venter chris venter venter in afrikaans chris venter and his father was the pastor of, I believe, the is in Cape Town somewhere. I'm not sure if it was the Belleville Church, but anyhow, in Cape Town. And so I preached that day. Shows you, you know why I preached this message so good? Because I already preached when I was 23. Amen. <laughs> and anyhow, so when I preached that, I preached it at his church. And I remember there was such faith in the place after I preached. At least that's how I felt. I felt everybody here, just their faith was lifted. They got a faith lift. Amen. (laughs) And so 
Yeah. And he still told the people, he said, you know, I feel like nothing is impossible for God right now. Amen. And I always remember that thing sticking with me. Praise the Lord. Now, why did I pick this message? I had a dream this week. And I dreamt that I was going to preach. And there was just a few people when I got there. And somebody next to me told me, he said, uh, there's a lot of problems with the, this meeting. A lot, lot, there's a lot wrong with this meeting. A lot wrong. That's what he said. There's a lot wrong with this meeting. But I felt confident. Sometimes you know, in your dream, sometimes you just feel uncomfortable or something happened. But then I felt confident in this dream. I saw this small group of people, but I felt confident. And then I, I went and um, did something. I went to get, um, and I came back with shoes. Shoes. And I, I, uh, I don't know what, anyhow, let me just tell you, it's not the main point, but I, I, had, the, I had to go get these shoes. And it was somebody else's shiny shoes. And when I got there, I was thinking, I don't need those shiny shoes. I, I, I can just use mine. In fact, the ones I have on here today, they, uh, they're not too bad, but they're not shiny. They're not the brand new, you know. So, and, uh, and what does the Bible say? Shoes on your feet for the preparation of the gospel of peace. This is my anointing. This is the way I function. I don't need anybody else's way of functioning. Amen. God made you and me a unique person. And I went back with those shoes. And when I got to the meeting, there were thousands of people. First, there was a few people. There were thousands of people. And I told, and in my mind, I said, today I will preach about with God, all things are possible. Amen. And I was expecting miracles to happen. So today I'm preaching to you today. That, that's why I got the inspiration to preach on this this week. I want you to know with God, all things are possible. With God, nothing is impossible. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Hallelujah! God's going to bring you through. God's going to give you victory. God's going to give you a breakthrough. Can somebody say amen? amen? So let's believe God right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I've already laid hands on all my dear brothers and sisters. My, my sisters here today, except little baby here, my boy's back there. Thank you for Nile, Lord. Yes. My hands are cold. I'm going to even touch his head. Lord, bless little Nile in the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord, that you got his destiny ahead of him. Timothy and Trey, I'll just come to you. Lord, I bless them in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you for, for Timothy in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. With God, all things are possible. And Lord, as he goes into his new season of his life, God, I thank you that there's great things ahead of him. And Lord, next month he'll turn 17 on February what? Uh, 13th, right? The February 13th. Lord, thank you. I've got three boys got birthdays in February. That's why I have to remember which one is it. So that's I've got all three of them. So, Lord, thank you, Lord, that as he turns 17, God, you're going to use him. God, you're going to open doors for him, for college and everything, God. You make all his dreams come true. And, Lord, I thank you for Trey. Next month, February 1st, he turns 15. 15. Thank you, Father. Bless them, Trey, in the name of Jesus. Lord, do a mighty, mighty work in his life. And God, I thank you that you will finish the work that you started in Jesus' name. I'm going to pray for healing for you, but let me just say something. When I pray for Trey, I remember. By the way, I just finished my autobiography. It's, I haven't even told people about it. It's on Amazon as we speak right now. I just, I, the reason I didn't, I'm going to tell you a story now. It's part of my message for you on YouTube. But it's part of the big story here, but... The reason I haven't um, written one is because I still have half my life ahead of me, you know. And, you're like, and one day I think I'll write the 500 or 1,000 pager, you know, and all the memoirs. But I thought, let me just write a small book that wound up to be about 80, 90 pages. With the pictures, it's like 100 pages. Got photos in there. And uh, just finished it. 
and um, in the book I, I share a lot of things but I remembered in the book I mentioned about Trey I had a neck pain I can't remember why I got it or whatever it was neck and back and uh, Trey was like three and he's I'm, I'm there in my bed you know when you get up and you just move I had this terrible neck pain and I think I was reading Trey a, 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 Bible, a, a story and when I turned my face twitched and Trey was like what wrong daddy I, I said daddy daddy's neck's hurting he said daddy me pray for you in Jesus name be healed okay daddy you heal I mean just like that I think it was verbatim the way he said that just like a boom and it uplifted my faith and I I just I don't go check my neck out and all that like I do sometimes but I just left it and I said okay I'm healed I'm gonna sleep now when I wake up my neck pain will be gone the next day I woke up my pain was gone hallelujah praise God if you want neck pain go see Trey back there he's a professional on the specialist and neck and neck and back issues <laughs> so but you know what I um, I uh, told, told that story on Facebook and then the Church of God was having their um, their camp meeting there you know close to crossroad they got the Raymond E Crowley Worship Center that's where they have their camp meetings every year I actually heard that they just stopped having it um, I don't know if, just because of COVID or is it forever but that's where the campground it's like a thousand people show up uh, on a Sunday night there and they have meetings every night it's like one of the hottest meetings ever on the Eastern Shore every year I just loved it and miss it but you know what suddenly the overseer he's opening the meeting and he said I just read on Facebook and he tells the story and when he told the story I'm like yeah that's me he's talking about and my son and he's telling people that God can do all this through them and then he did say it's it, it's a uh, brother Joel Hitchcock over there <laughs> praise God so hallelujah let me let me say I'm gonna pray for you now for healing and I already laid hands on everybody but listen if you need healing in any place of your body right now because in my dream I said God I preach on God, with God all things are possible and I was expecting miracles of healing so are you ready let's all stand put your hand on your body where your sickness is you have to do too many places just put your hand on your chest or your or your head or something amen and let's believe God Heavenly Father in the name of Jesus I pray for your people Lord I stand in faith for them today in the name of Jesus Lord I pray that you touch your people Lord I pray for healing Lord, I come against every sickness and every disease in this place. Lord, I bind the sickness. I bind the diseases. I cast it off of God's people right now. By the authority of the name of Jesus. And by the Holy Ghost. And by the blood of Jesus. And by the word of faith. And I speak over you right now, friends, in Jesus' name. Sickness, be healed. Mountains, be moved. Come off of the people of God. Every sickness, every disease. Every sickness, every disease. Does anybody have a neck issue? Just raise your hand. Trey, come here. Put your hand on her neck. Oh, in that area, just put your hand. Come amen praise God just put your hand yeah and the other hand on her neck on her back father as Trey he lays his hand in the mighty name of Jesus the healing virtue of God flows through Trey right now in Jesus name and you heal her amen amen say I receive it Lord